such a cute little bonus block. Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and we are on, my goodness, week 17 and 18, I think, of the Midnight Moon Quilt Along. We are well into this. But if you're new here, it's you can still get into this. This is a pattern, which I have down below. It's Summer Moon Pattern by Carrie Nelson. And then these are fabrics from uh, Moda Fabrics. They're called Midnight Magic 2. But you can use your own Halloween fabrics if you want to follow along also. So I've got links to the fabrics and the um, pattern down below. I've got all the videos out for all the previous blocks, so it's not too late to jump into this or even do it for next year. So. We are on a roll. It's so much fun. And we got my Lemax Spooky Town uh, Village out this weekend that we're gonna be putting together. So it is Halloween in this house and I am excited. But anyway, this is the bonus block pattern. It is so cute. It's a skull pattern. It's by uh, Prairie Grass. I think it's Prairie Grass Patterns, which is April Rosenthal. I also have a link down below. You don't need to buy the Summer Moon pattern to get this. This is a free pattern. And you can use your own fabrics and everything for this. So I'm going to walk through this. This was probably the most difficult of all the free patterns we had. Mostly because right in here there's a lot of tiny little seams. So my block didn't end up being eight and a half inches. So whatever I decide to use it for, I could either cut it down or just add some more fabric to it. So I'm not too worried about it. It's really super cute. And then we've also got our finishing. This is called the small patchwork finishing um, block. And there's going to be, there's always six of them. The last two weeks, yeah, the last two weeks, you know, we've gotten six blocks out of each of those. So we'll get six blocks out of this. Even though I'm only showing one, we've got six that will look exactly the same, except for your center block will be different. And it uses your small blocks here. But I'm gonna walk through this super easy. I show you that the seams, even though they need to be in opposite directions, you don't need to worry about that uh, too much. I mean, I show you how to do that too. I did mine randomly. You can do yours however you want. I just chose randomly. So there we go. In a couple weeks, we'll be done. We have one more small finishing block, and then we've got a week of the medium blocks, and then a week of the large blocks. And then we finish the quilt. And at that point, I'll probably have my spooky village up, so I'll show you that. And I'll show you some of my Halloween quilts. I'll do a little quilt show, so stick around. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, check out the links below. And, uh, yeah, let's have some Halloween fun. All right, we are on week 19 of our Moda Midnight Moon Quilt Along. This is the uh, summer moon pattern, but we're using it with Halloween fabrics. And we have finished all our blocks. We just did a bonus block, and we are, we've done some finishing blocks, but we are on our third, one, two, three, four, third of four finishing blocks for the small pieces, which are right here. And this one should be pretty easy. I've got all my pieces cut. Let me show you real quick which one we're doing. We are doing this right here. So we're gonna be putting together all these little squares right here and then finishing around the small block and putting it all together to make this really cool looking patchwork block. So you're going to need two backgrounds if you want. I did two backgrounds. So all of these are cut with both my backgrounds and then I decided to do two different sets of colors. So this is my first set right here for the patchwork part and then this is my second set for the patchwork part. So three of my blocks will have these in it and three will have these in it. Now I think in the long run it's not gonna look that different, but it gives it a little bit of variety for the quilt and for me putting it together. Cause we're gonna have 12 patchwork sets to put together. With that being said, I think we can get started. Um, we aren't gonna need these till the end. 
And I am just going to start with this patchwork set right here. Oops, I need that. So I'm going to set all of that aside. And what we're going to do, we're going to put eight in a row and we're going to make two rows of eight. And then we're going to put those two rows together. So you could kind of mix it up if you want, grab from each pile as you go. It really doesn't matter. I think maybe I'll just grab from each pile as I go right now. So we're just going to put these together <clears throat> like this. We're going to sew them and then we are going to just iron them all in one direction. So we want to we want to have them in the end ironed one row in one direction, one row in the other. But let me show you what I'm going to do. Let me get a few of these sewn and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do so you don't have to keep track of which direction you're going. ahead and chain pieced um, some of them that I had. I separated them. Um, this is one block, two blocks. I've got three blocks made right now. I still need to make three more, um, but I'll show you how one block goes. So let me get these separated. And it's going to be 16 blocks or 16 patches that you need. And so I have eight here because there's two patches in each one. So you don't need to think about which way you're doing it, especially if you're not concerned about having it in a certain order. If you are, then you'll need to pay attention. But just grab your pieces and start ironing. Okay, so got all these ironed they're gonna make two rows so what you want to do is when you put your rows together you just want to make sure that your seams are going the same way in each row like that and it still doesn't matter down here just as long as they're going in the same way because then what we can do when we put the rows together we can just flip them to whichever way we need to make these seams nest and when you iron, when you put these two together and you come back and iron, you want to make sure you're ironing in the same direction as the previous seams. So let's get these sewn together and we'll get these ironed and then we'll start having some rows. Okay, so now just pay attention when you're ironing which way you need to iron this seam. So my seam needs to be ironed this way. So that all your seams will be facing the same direction. Okay, now we can lay these back out, get our seams going in the same direction. And we can put these together. And again, just be mindful which way your seams need to go. Okay, we've got two rows where all the seams are ironed in the same direction. So let's get this one to lay down a little better. Okay, we've got two rows where all our seams are going in the same direction. So, let's flip them over. And we want them to go in opposite directions, so that's all we have to do. And now we can put it together. 
and I will pin every seam because I like to do that. It helps keep them in place. So let's do it this way. So if I put the top seam, so if I sew down this side and the top seam's facing this way, that means that it'll kind of push these seams together when you sew. So let's do that. Let's make it so our top, the side we're going to be looking at when we sew has the seams going to the left. Because then the, the machine will kind of push that seam into the other one. Okay, now we'll sew this together and we are just going to iron towards one side. Okay, so now we will just iron to one side. There's a lot of seamage going on here. There we go, and our points look really good. It's hot, but you can see the points look really good. So, next thing we're going to do is grab one of our backgrounds. So let's work with the polka dot background. And we're going to grab C. I'm going to give it a little bit of an iron. And we're going to put right sides together. Choose which side you want to be your right side. I think I'll choose the dark since I'm putting in the light. And we'll put right sides together over on this side. And we're going to sew this on and we're going to iron towards the C patch. Okay, there is our top patchwork piece completed. Now, we will, there's a couple things we can do. Let's see, we need D, and I need, since I'm working with the polka dot, I need one of my Ds. This is gonna get laid out right here. Then I need my B and my A of the same background color. That's going to go over here. And my A is going to go over here. And then my last background color, oh, it's another D. Sorry, we need two Ds. I was, look, I was just going around the block looking. I'm going to need a D down here, and then we're going to need a block to go in the middle. So that's how it's going to go together. Give all of this a little bit of a press. Get those wrinkles out from sitting around. So there's a couple ways we could approach this. We could put these together and these together. Um, let's put this together first, or we could put this together, then this, then this, it doesn't matter. But let's put these three together, so. Let's pin this on this side. We'll pin this on the opposite side. And we are always going to be ironing towards these cream colored strips. So that's pretty easy to remember. So, sew these on, iron towards the cream colored uh, strip. There we go. There's this. I think I will sew this onto my top patchwork strip, and then we'll have three rows to put together. 
No seams to match. Yay! Flip it over. Now we're going to attach this to the top, iron towards the strip, attach this to the bottom, iron towards the strip. Our small patchwork finishing trims for the small blocks and there's six of these to do and three are going to be in for me in my case three will be in this background and three will be in my silver polka dot background so all blocks are exactly the same that's how you do it I kind of did mine in a um, random order up here as you can see and I'm going to have three blocks with these fabrics and three blocks with um, four different fabrics. So there you go. Let me know in the comments how far you are. You know, have you gotten this far? How was this block to do? It was pretty easy. I had fun doing it. I'm having a lot of fun doing this um, quilt along. It's, it's getting close to Halloween, so it's getting, even, uh, it's getting even more fun and exciting to do. Plus, we're almost, we're almost finished. I think we've got four more weeks. We have three more weeks of working on our quilt top and then we're gonna finish it. The fourth week we'll probably be putting it all together. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helps you. I enjoyed making this block. I enjoyed making this video. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna watch me finish this quilt and, or if you're um, quilting along with me. And uh, hit the subscribe button notification bell and we'll have a lot of fun on this channel got other fun things I'm doing too. So I will see you in the next video. All right, here we are on the bonus block. Week 18. Week 18, we have our, bo our final bonus block. It's the fourth one and it's a spooky skull. It's a free one uh, block pattern, just like all the other ones by Prairie Grass Patterns which is uh, April Rosenthal, and it's really cute. The skull pattern is really cute. So to get started, I already went through and cut all my pieces out. Um, there's a lot of pieces. Most of them are just single pieces, but we've got the gingham, which is going to be the eyes, the black, which is the background, and the white, which is going to be the skull part. So pieces aren't too hard to cut out or figure out, so... Um, oh, I want to make mention that this F, you do not need that F. I don't know what happened here, um, but I found out you don't need to cut F. So go from E to G. But I think we can get started putting this together. Um, and I've already done it once, but my video cut out and I didn't know it. So I got to do it again. And hopefully it'll go a little easier because this uh, nose part right here is pretty small. But yeah, let's get started. Okay, to get started here, <clears throat> we're going to start with our J and our E. And the back of your E needs to be marked on a diagonal. And we're going to take our J. Lay it out in front of us, right side up, and we're going to take our E's and lay them in the top right and top left corners so that the diagonal is going to cut the corners off. And we are going to sew on the line, trim a quarter of an inch from the line, and then iron towards the dark. Trim a quarter of an inch from the seam you just sewed. And iron towards the dark corner. Okay. 
So that's done. I'm going to set that aside for now. Now we want to grab D, which is a gingham piece, and L, which is a small piece. And we're just going to need two L's at this point. And the back of your L's need to be marked on the diagonal. So let's lay our pieces face up towards us and we're going to put our small L pieces so that the diagonal cuts off the bottom left of one. <clears throat> and the bottom right. So we're making the eyes right now. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to sew on the line, trim a quarter of an inch, and iron towards the corner. Okay, there's my eyes done right now. So we want to take our eyes and we're going to put these K pieces on either side. So we're going to be building up that section of the skull with his eyes in it. So we're just going to kind of put those eyes in between these three K pieces. We're going to sew all of these together and then we're going to iron towards these cream colors. Okay, here's my finished eye section, which is going to go, it's going to end up going underneath there. So these two are done. Now we need to do the nose section, which I found a little tricky last time. So we need C, which is pretty tiny in itself. And we need L, which is just like the two tiny ones we needed. And then in a minute, we're gonna need even tinier ends. So on the L's, we wanna take these two pieces, lay them up, face up towards us. And then we wanna lay, oh, you gotta put a diagonal like before. You wanna make it so that we're cutting off the top left and the top right of these pieces. So we're going to sew these. We're going to trim a quarter of an inch from the line and then we're going to iron towards the corner. Okay, got these on and I've ironed them towards the corner. Now we're going to take the remaining two tiny little end pieces and we're going to put them in this case, the bottom left. Cut off this bottom left corner. <clears throat> and we're going to cut off this bottom right corner. So, sew along the line, trim a quarter of an inch, and iron towards the white. Okay, we got a lot going on here. But I got these corners on and I've ironed them towards the white. Now we need to put these two pieces together and that forms the small nose on this skeleton. So put them together just like this. And you can do your best to line up the seams here. And sew it. <clears throat> and then my suggestion is to iron it I don't know if you should iron it open or to the side. Whatever you feel is best when you get done sewing it. <laughs> I'll see how it looks when I get done. Well, there it is. It's not very lined up there, but guess what? He's a skeleton. He's all decayed, so I'm sticking with it. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we want to do is take one of our O's we got to fill out the bottom of this nose. <laughs> so we're going to add, this is the bottom of the nose. We're going to put our O right side together with the bottom, sew it together, and iron towards that white O piece. Phew! So that is done. I'm going to set that aside for now. We're going to take our M and our E pieces, 
and we're gonna make like the jawline. So your E's are have a diagonal on them. We're gonna take our M's and lay them like this, so the length is towards you, or the longer side. <laughs> and we're gonna cut off with our diagonal, the bottom left and the bottom right. So along the diagonal line, trim a quarter of an inch, iron towards the black corner. Okay, there are my two M and E pieces put together. And now what we're going to do is add them to our tiny little nose piece, nose piece in the middle. So, so these together, quarter of an inch, and then iron towards these outside pieces. Okay, there is my nose section and the jaw. So this has some tiny little pieces in it. So just do your best here. And remember, it is Halloween. It's a skeleton and he's decaying. So if you don't get your nose nice and together, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. I had a hard time on the first one I did with this piece. So now we're going to do the teeth. I'm going to set this aside with the eyes and the forehead. Now we're going to do the teeth, and we need A's and O's. Again, tiny pieces, but not so many seams. And we're basically going to alternate our colors. So I'm just going to lay them out so I know how they go. And we're going to put these together, so these quarter of an inch, and then iron towards these white pieces. Okay, there is my teeth. So what we're going to do is cut these in half. So basically, uh, they are one and a half inches, so three quarters of an inch right down the middle. So now we have upper and lower teeth. So we want to grab our B pieces. Or our B piece, I should say. And that's going to go right in between these two. So get these sewn onto the middle. And I guess iron towards this. Those seams are going to be... They may be touching or crossing each other, but iron towards this centerpiece. So, yep, we're going with some pretty tiny pieces and seams here. Okay. So there's going to be really no room to iron. So you're going to have to iron this, one of these seams, towards the teeth. It's the only way it's going to fit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this on, and then I'm going to iron towards the teeth. Okay, there's my teeth. There's so much seam there that it won't even lay down straight yet, but as we get it sewn, it will. So I had to iron towards the center, or yeah, iron towards the center strip on one of these and iron towards the teeth on the other. Okay, now we need P. Which are these tiny little pieces. So interesting because the pattern has bigger pieces. The pattern pages show bigger, bigger pieces than what these actually are. So we're going to take our P and we're going to put them on each side of our teeth. We're going to sew these on and iron towards this cream colored P. Okay, so next we're going to take our Q and we're going to put it along the bottom of our teeth like this. So, get this sewn on, iron towards this cream colored Q piece. So, let's turn this over. There's our teeth, part of our chin. Now we want to take our G's. And this is going to be part of the background here. Oops, flip that over. We're going to put these onto the sides of our teeth, and we'll iron towards these dark side pieces. 
Okay, our little tooth unit's done now. So we're gonna now move, we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to the chin. So we need our R and our S. So what we're gonna do is we have to take our S and we'll lay it on the corner but perpendicular to our R piece. And then we want to, here it is, right in front of me, we want to draw a diagonal from the top left corner of the white piece to the bottom right corner of the black piece down here. So I'm going to put my top right corner right there so I know it's right there on that intersection. And draw from that intersection down to the right. Now I'm going to sew along here on the line and then I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch and iron the black towards the black piece. So there is one side. Now we will do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to put it my top right corner at that intersection so I know where to put my ruler and line it up with the bottom left hand corner draw my line and sew on the line trim a quarter of an inch iron towards the black okay there's my chin finished and now we're ready to start putting all this together so this is going to go on top of the chin and then the nose is going to go on top of the teeth the eyes are going to go on top of the nose and then here's the forehead H background is going to go up here and I is going to go on either side like that. So let's just put the skull together right now. I'm going to start up here and I'm going to start working my way down and I'm going to try to iron towards the piece that has less seams. So, I think we have nest we have matching seams right here. And right here. Right here we have matching seams and right here we have matching seams. So, just keep that in mind as you're putting these together. So, I'm going to start up here add the eyes to the forehead. face. Cool him off. So, this side seems to come out. Let's just Let's just trim it. He's not going to be eight and a half. Um, I don't think so. If you want eight and a half, you might want to widen all of these here. So, but it is what it is for me right now. And I'm just going to start at the top, get this piece of background sewn on, and iron towards the strip. <laughs> now we will put our sides on. And yeah, this is an eight and a half inch strip and it goes well beyond. So, like I said, if I want to make it bigger in the end, I will add some more of this background to it to get it to whatever size my little heart desires. So there we go. 
I'm just going to trim those off. And I got my little, I got my little skull block. It's cute. Whatever size he is. So this one was a little more difficult because of these small pieces, these small tiny seams. I mean it really, the more seams you get in something, the more it kind of wants to shrink up. So if you have not started this, just and you want it and you're not sure that you know you're afraid it might not get to eight and a half which this is one two three four five six seven eight by one two three four five six seven eight so mine ended up being eight by eight if you want it to be eight and a half cut these bigger and maybe add a strip down here and then you can cut eight and a half out of your have the skull floating in the background well there you go I got both my blocks that I did this was the first one I did this was the second one that I did in the video here um, so yeah free pattern links are in the description below a lot of fun to do just got to be careful especially in this area with all these little seams if you want to stick around and watch me finish this quilt hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell you'll get notified every time I put up a video and uh, we got lots of other fun stuff going along, going on on this, uh, on this channel. Hi, buddy. Anyway, well, I uh, enjoyed putting this block together. I enjoyed making the video, and I really appreciate you watching it. So for me and Snoopy, we'll see it. We'll say goodbye, and we'll see you in the next video.